This is Health and Society, a podcast series featuring early career researchers from the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London with interviewer Nigel Warburton. For further information and more podcasts, go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk. Hello, I'm Nigel Warburton and joining me today is Caroline Green, a PhD student in the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at King's College London. The topic we're going to focus on is human rights and care homes. We're focusing on care homes for the elderly. How does the issue of human rights come in there at all? That is a really good question. I think it is one, first of all, that relates to you know, the dignity of the people living in care homes. And it is an, a big issue that has been out there. We've been talking about in society. It's a, it's a really important one for all of us. And we can see it in the media, we can see it in politics, we can see it in the public authorities um, working on this issue, policy papers. So it is all around us and it is an important one for the ageing society that we live in. And your discipline, your intellectual discipline is discourse analysis. So you're particularly interested in the way people talk about these sorts of issues. Yes, I would say so. I mean, discourse analysis to me is really, I'm going to be looking at um, how we use language Um, but particularly also what meaning we ascribe to human rights and to dignity in care homes. And because I believe that, you know, the way we talk about it, the way we write it down, the way we then see it in policy papers influences um, the way in the end we will work. So um, I want to actually see on how human rights has been conceptualised and been helping people to work in care homes on human rights and how it could maybe also be use differently the concept of human rights. In one sense, human rights are just legal rights that we have that are given by international law. Is that the sense that you're interested in? Well, I'm um, interested more in human rights, not in the legalistic sense, but actually in the normative sense, in the ethical sense, namely that we have human rights not because law gives it to us, but because we're human beings. And um, I'm coming from a social justice perspective where human rights are seen as instruments um, in certain you know, social justice theories that I'm going to be um, looking at in my, in my PhD and using as the analytical framework for, yeah, in the end, you know, using my data and analysing my data. And you're contrasting two different countries here, the, the, well, the UK and Germany. Exactly, because human rights is also in the way we talk about it and use it, um, I believe is also very specific to the context that you are um, working with. So the context, I mean, the law, the culture, you know, also the history of the places. And it is different in Germany and in England. In England, you've got the Human Rights Act. Um, for example, in Germany, you don't. You have the human rights within the Constitution. And that already has really a really big influence on how um, people talk and use human rights, how it is perceived. But the issue of care homes and human rights is just as important in both settings. So I want to use those two settings and see and compare them, see whether they can learn from each other or whether they can work together with each other. So I'm interested in looking at that. I think the term human rights for me, would be most likely to come up in in this context when something terrible has happened. You know, this is uh, a violation of human rights, people will say. Exactly, yes. And this is actually really why I became so interested in it, because I did a Master's of Human Rights at the LSE before I came to King's. And what I saw living in Germany, you know, I would look into the newspapers and every other week you would um, see the headline, oh, another human rights violation in a care home. And I'd find that really interesting. I was like, oh, okay, so, because what's really happening here is that the care workers who, you know, working in care homes feel like, well, they may be perpetrators of human rights violations. But I've also felt like, okay, well, that's an interesting idea. First of all, human rights, you know, for the residents of care homes, a really important issue. On the other hand, how can care workers actually be empowered to work with human rights so that they can actually provide human rights oriented and human rights based care so that they you know can also like answer to when people say oh you've been a violator of human rights and how would somebody make the connection between human rights and their day-to-day practice within a care home? I think people now have to because it's out there in the media so much um, that people are starting to think about it more 
but of course um, I think that within the care and the curricula of you know when people like nursing students well, nursing that's in Germany there would be nursing students here in England it's different the social care workers but there you will already also learn about dignity about person-centered care which in the end is also a human rights issue so I think that in the end I and mean, you know they're being sort of exposed to human rights in different ways and um, what would now be good is to you know, see and actually bring bring everything together the curricula together the policy papers together the media reports together so that people actually know what we're talking about so is what you're saying this that there's a certain vagueness about what we mean by human rights in this context it's obviously important we understand that there's a need for dignity of anybody who is in a care home and that there's a legal obligation but there's a, a moral obligation as well but people get confused when they talk about human rights i think so i think there but you know there are some issues for example abuse there you would be able to say okay well you know a person has a right not to be treated in an undignified manner and abuse would definitely fall underneath that but then there are other rights for example the right to privacy or the right to family life what does that mean within the setting of a care home how do people you know what framework conditions do there need to be does a person have to live in their own room or you know is it okay that they have to share a room how do care workers have to treat people so that they don't violate the right to you know to privacy and some of it may be quite clear and other issues are not so i think it's important to actually put flesh to the bones here and presumably also to distinguish between what's required by law and what is good for the way that you treat another human being because you could within the framework of the law still presumably not violate somebody's human rights legally but still treat them quite badly exactly yeah i think that's also a gap i want to address within my phd research and this is why i'm also doing the discourse analysis and i will be including i mean discourse is a is a very broad concept with different definitions but the one i will be using will definitely also include on how the law works around this issue and then try and actually see the normative statements that we're making outside the law what should be but maybe the law doesn't say there has to be you know so there may well be a gap here but i don't know yet because i haven't researched it yet i suppose what's underlying all this is a question of social justice how you treat people within our society people who might be vulnerable exactly and what we are talking here about are older people older people living in care homes now in england the people living in in care homes older people are the average is um 85 years plus and often they have you know multimorbidity so that means that they can't look um after themselves anymore and many of them are dementia sufferers so they are vulnerable people a lot of them and what this issue of human rights and older people in care home really is about is social justice for these people and how do we perceive them in our society what lives do we want them to have and what lives do we want to lead when we are older so this is really the issue what this is for me about is the social justice for older people living in care homes and here i would like to add um that i'm concentrating on care homes but most cares actually provided in residential in their own homes so this is just as an important issue and human rights talking you know in in relation to care at home is a very different issue again and it's just as important but it's a different issue that i can't look at at the moment because it would just be too much do you have a a specific set of human rights that you're focusing on your research. Well, I will have a one case study on the right to physical freedom. So, and the issue of restraint because that is actually an issue that um you know is well spoken about there's a lot of policy papers both in England and in Germany. So, um this is going to be one that I will be looking at, but otherwise I will be generally considering how is human rights discourse being used in order to shape the idea of dignified care and what we want for older people in care homes it's very difficult because presumably there's a lot of paternalism that goes on that for the sake of the individual they have their movement restricted because otherwise they would damage themselves or other people 
And there must be lots of grey areas about whether somebody's actually competent to take control of their environment and negotiate it unaided, or whether they need to be kept in their room or kept in a chair until somebody's available to help them. The big issue with um, freedom and restraint is the issue of duty of care. That a lot of care workers, well, care workers still do have the duty of care. So they may well be legally liable if a person falls and they could have done something to prevent that fall. On the other hand, if someone says, I don't want to sit in this chair and I want to freely roam around and walk around, then they should have a right to do so. So how do you actually balance this out? How do you balance out the duty of care on one hand and the right to not be physically restrained on the other? And that is actually a really big issue for care workers because I've been doing some interviews previously in Germany and they've said, you know, just balancing this out and knowing what is right is really difficult for them and this is where we need more clarity. I can imagine in many situations in a care home there's a kind of ease of your work, there's a simpler to keep people in a room, to keep them at the table while they're finishing their meal or whatever, not give them that kind of freedom. That, that It actually might, might be difficult operationally if you're running a care home to give people the kind of autonomy that that you might expect of somebody who isn't in a care home. And it's a really important issue that you're touching on here are the framework conditions. This is what I mean by framework conditions. If you have a care home, uh, which you know is quite usual in, in Germany, for example, of 120 people, many of them have dementia. Dementia is something, it's a 24-hour job because people with dementia often also wake up at night, they will walk around at night. And if you then only have two or three care workers, sometimes you even only have one care worker who has to look after different people uh, you know, at the same time, it's going to make it really difficult for them. And then it's again this duty of care. So how do you make sure that you know, some, one person doesn't get lost, another person falls, and then on the other hand you don't restrict their freedom? So it is it's a really difficult um, issue, but there are solutions and people are coming up with solutions. So there are many different ways of dealing with this now and products out there on the market actually to be making people safer so that they can still um, do what they want to do. Well, you talk about technology. What strikes me is that surveillance technology has reached a state where sometimes relatives of of people in care homes can plant cameras and, and observe how their relatives are treated. And, and there have been a number of cases where people have been able to provide evidence that their human rights have been violated. Yeah, I think that may actually be an, an effect of the human rights discourse that we've been seeing, is that people are also more worried about you know, issues. And probably, I mean, of course, rightly so, everyone is worried about their their relative, you know, everyone wants their relative to be safe and happy wherever they are living. But I wonder whether that really is the best way of dealing with the issue. And I think that human rights violations, it's such a negative connotation to it. But I truly believe it can be a positive instrument. You know, you can use it to come up with a human rights oriented framework and approach for care which can be positive rather than a strain on care workers. So you're just beginning your research in this area. What would be your ideal outcome, your ideal scenario at the end? What this is really for me about is an issue of social justice because old age and care in the end touches us all. We're becoming older, we've got relatives who may be in care homes or not who need care and so I'm really passionate about this issue and I want to make a contribution to how we perceive older people, what we want them to have at that stage of their lives and also you know, how I want old age to perceive it for myself. Caroline Green, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Health and Society. This podcast series is sponsored by the Educational Fund and produced by Aidan Judd and Ellie Clifford. For further information and more podcasts, go to www.healthandsociety.co.uk.